You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. Welcome back to the show. I'm now joined in studio by Carmel Harrington, a local author. Good morning, Carmel, and thank you very much for joining me this morning. Good morning, Carl. How are you? Very good, thank you. Carmel, you might start by telling me a little bit about your own background, because you weren't always an author, were you? No, um, this is a relatively new venture for me. Um, I'm from Wexford. I'm from Blackwater originally. Um, Moved to Dublin when I was 18 and spent, well, nearly 20 years in Dublin working in sales and marketing. Then I got married and had children and moved back home to Wexford. And when I moved back home to Wexford, it was then that I decided that I wanted to follow my dream to become a published author. And you certainly became that when last March you won the Kindle Book Awards um, for Beyond Grace's Rainbow. Tell me a bit about Beyond Grace's Rainbow firstly, please. Beyond Grace's Rainbow, it um, would be within the women's fiction genre. It's a story about a young single mother, Grace, who finds out that she has cancer and she's absolutely terrified of dying. She does not want to leave her son behind. So she wants to find a way of beating cancer. Um she was adopted when she was a small baby herself and her best chance of beating cancer is to get a bone marrow transplant and the best chance of a match is to find her biological family. So her story, Grace's story, brings her on a journey of discovery really where she searches for both her mother and father and um, there's a web of lies and deceit surrounding that. Um, she has a group of friends who are with her throughout her journey. Um, it's definitely... A tearjerker. There's some very, very sad and poignant moments in it, but there's also some very funny moments in it too, I'm told. Where did the idea for that particular book come from? Well, actually, my best friend, um, Anne, is adopted. And one night we were sitting down chatting and she was saying that one of the hardest things about being adopted is not knowing your medical history. And that was something she struggled with. So that actually was the seeds of Beyond Grace's Rainbow. So I thought that's quite an interesting storyline, really. So I wanted to look at that. What would happen if somebody was to get, um, you know, diagnosed with a serious illness where they really needed to to get help from their biological family? Then my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. So from first-hand experience, I saw the effect that cancer has not only on the person who is diagnosed, but also on the family that are supporting that person. So I was quite interested to to use that in the novel too. In relation to the book itself, you decided to go with the non-traditional route of an e-book instead of going down the road of getting it published. Mm-hmm. What was the reason for that? Well, basically, what I had done was I'd actually, I actually wrote Beyond Grace's Rainbow six years ago before I got married, showed it to a few friends and a couple of family members and then put it under the bed, literally under the bed, and it gathered dust. Then when I was on maternity leave with my first child, Amelia, I wrote a second book and I did the same with that. I actually didn't show it to anyone. I just put it under the bed. So I kind of knew that that was a bit silly, that if I was going to keep writing books and not show them to anyone, I wasn't really going to get anywhere. So I made a decision last year that I would actively look to get published. And then Annie, my best friend, she actually saw an article in the Irish Times and it was talking about ebook publishing as a route to that market. And when I looked at the article, I thought hmm, this could actually work for me. So I decided that maybe the quickest way for me to get noticed by a publisher and to get that elusive book deal would be to um, show that I actually did have a voice and that I did have readers who liked what I wrote. So I decided to rewrite Beyond Grace's Rainbow, bring it up to date, which I did, and then I published it as an e-book in August 2012. Now, there's lots of people, I'm sure, listening to the show this morning that are thinking, well, I have a book inside me, but for one reason or another, they just can't seem to get it out. What's the process? What advice would you give to somebody out there today that's thinking that? Um, It can be quite daunting, actually, to start writing and knowing where to start. And I think you're right. I think everybody um, has a story inside of them, but it's actually getting that structured and getting it written down in a format that people want to read. I would certainly suggest um, blogging. I don't know if if your readers know about blogging, but blogging is a great way of actually honing your skill and getting into the habit of writing and writing well every day. And with blogging, you can pick any subject you want. So if gardening is your passion, well then blog about gardening. Um, if you're a mother and you want to blog about your children, do that. But slowly and surely you'll start building up um, a readership with people who like what you say. And that's a great way to start. I think 
after that, then really you need to emerge yourself in the literary world and um, social media is a great way of doing that. Use Twitter and use Facebook. Um, follow authors and see what they're doing. And then, of course, you've actually got to write the book. So you need to, you know, think about your idea and flesh it out. And there are lots of lots of people, like myself included, you will have an idea for a novel, but when you try to flesh it out, it may not actually be a novel, it might be a short story. So make sure that your idea can translate into about 100,000 words and then start writing. When your novel is written, then you need to show it to um, somebody who can edit it for you and have a look at it and make sure that what you've written is good. I suppose the next step to follow that is getting an agent. Mm -hmm. How influential are agents? Really, they're essential. I think there are so many great authors out there who are looking to get that elusive book deal, just like myself. And publishers receive hundreds and hundreds of manuscripts every single day and they just go on what's called the sludge pile. So in order for you to get to the top of that pile, you need to get an agent because an agent has already got a reputation with a publisher that they have a good eye for talent and they know what makes a good book. So if an agent has rubber stamped your manuscript, that means a publisher are more likely to, to look at that manuscript seriously. Um, so I think it's really essential. I think that it's very rare you hear about an author who gets a book deal with a publisher without the help of an agent these days. And again, you recently secured an agent. Uh, what was the process behind that? Um, there's there's actually a yearbook, a writer's yearbook, um, called the Writer's Yearbook, and every year it's re-released um, with updated information. And in that, it gives you every agent and every publisher in the UK and Ireland and also in the States so for me, that's an essential resource for any writer out there. So I looked at that and I decided there were about four or five agents that I would really love to work with. So I wrote to each of them. And luckily for me, one of the five that I had really wanted to work with, Tracy Brennan, um, came back and said she was interested in reading some of my manuscripts. So she read the first few chapters and then thankfully came back and she was hooked, as she said, and she wanted to read the complete manuscript. OK, congratulations on that. So the next step would be to obtain a publisher. How important is it to have a publisher? I suppose the obvious benefit would be distribution. But apart from distribution, what are the other benefits? A publisher, to have a publisher on side, first of all, they have all the contacts, as you said, for distributing the actual book. They'll also be able to get that book overseas, translated into different languages. And really, you know, to be a successful author, you really want to be international. You don't just want to be a big fish in a small pond here in Ireland. You want to try and sell your books overseas as well. So a publisher is crucial to that. Um, and really the dream for me is I want to see my book in printed form on shelves in all the bookshops around Ireland, um, see it in all the libraries around Ireland too. I mean, when I was a small child in Wexford, I went to the library every single week and got books out and I always looked at the bookshelves and thought, how cool would it be one day if my book was in, a li in the library in Wexford? And that's a dream that I really hope one day will come true. I see one of the approaches that publishers have taken over the last number of years is that they're approaching celebrities, mm -hmm. those that have high profiles mm -hmm. and those that, let's say, have a high following mm -hmm. on social media and themselves. Now, have you focused your attention on any particular high profile actress or actor mm -hmm. in relation to assisting you in that respect? Absolutely. I mean, you're quite right, Carl. Um, a publisher will always want to take on board a celebrity who's written a book because they already have a fan base. Um, so if they release a book, it's likely that their fans are going to buy it straight away. So there's less money needed to be spent on marketing that book. For an unknown author like myself, it's going to cost a little bit more money to actually get my profile out there. So what I did was um, recently, actually, um, Lee Arnold, who is one of Ireland's great young actresses, she's actually reading the book right now. And fingers crossed she likes it. And if you can get um, a review from a celebrity like that who actually endorses your book, that can be a great benefit in selling some more books in the future. Carmel, your passion for writing is obvious. Have you considered broadening it out from the literary world? You're right. I absolutely adore writing. Everything... Whenever I write, I just feel at peace. It's just the right thing to do. I love it. Um, I'm never short of ideas. I'm, in fact, my only problem is I don't have enough time to actually get those ideas down on the computer. Um, but recently I saw an open call for submissions for One Act Plays in Wexford. And it's part of Wexford's um, offering for the gathering this year. And they wanted um, local authors to write One Act Plays with Wexford as its central theme. So I decided to give it a go. And I wrote a play called A Dungan's Town Romance. Dungan's Town being where JFK 
is from and where he visited 50 years ago. And as this is the 50 year anniversary of his visit, I thought that would be quite a nice theme to my play. And um, I found out last week that my play was chosen. And on the 8th of June this year, my play will be shown in the Wexford Arts Centre. So I am really excited about that. The thoughts of um, words that I've written actually being spoken and acted on stage, I find really, really cool. Excellent. That's uh, certainly a great achievement for such a new author. Um, one final question for you. What's in store for the future for Carmel Harrington? Well, I just spoke actually to my agent, Tracy Brennan, just before I came to see you this morning, Carl. And as I said, Beyond Grace's Rainbow is currently with publishers as we speak. But the great news is that she has decided that she really likes my second book that I have completed. And the second book will also go to publishers within the next few weeks. So really, I'm going to keep writing. Um, I have lots of stories inside of me and I'm sure one day soon I'll get that book deal. Carmel, many thanks for coming in and speaking to us this morning and I wish you every success in the future. If you've just tuned in, you are welcome along to this week's edition of Saudi Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. Coming up after the news, I'll be speaking to Tom Burns of funpacks.ie about how the smoking ban created the seed of a business opportunity for him. So stay tuned. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.